Day seven on the Kokoda track, and we're moving from Naro to Voile Creek. And this is one of the hardest days of the trail. And we're going up to the top of the Maguli Range first. That should take us about an hour. And then a nice long down to Offy Creek. And then all the way up to Eora Bayo Ridge, which is where the Japanese and the Australians made their last stand. And then down to Voile Creek. My great companion <laughs> and compatriot here. He's gone, but he's going to lift. It's the third quarter of a footy game, if I can use the analogy of football. He's done legs, he's got a little bit of rib soreness and the throat's that don't, oh, don't tell, correct me what you've got, I know what you've got. He's got a sore throat and he's got a little bit of uh, rumbling in the tummy. And, uh, but he's going to box on and he, we are going to experience, of course, this is part of the malady that can overcome you when you're in war. But of course, as Peter said, uh, the people who fought 60 years ago won't be having a swim and a light lunch and <laughs> no. an apes and some finger food and some assorted cheeses from around the world when we get there. We're not the, the 11 river crossings that we are to navigate today. They don't tend to cause us too much concern because we just float and if they take us away, they take us away. But what we've got a greater, um, we've put it in some context now. You, you say quickly, oh, we're going to go up 800 metres and down 1100, well, it doesn't sound much. And if you haven't actually experienced it, it doesn't mean anything. But we've, sadly for us, we've got some context to it. So we know exactly what 800 metres up to start the morning's gonna be like, and that's gonna be horrendous. And then arguably going 1100 metres down uh, is just as tough. So the Australians have now retreated back to Imiter Ridge and Imiter Ridge is gonna be their last stand. That is the last ridge before they get to Port Moresby. But at the same time, the Japanese have been told to advance to the rear. They don't have a word for retreat, so they've been told to advance to the rear. And Eero Barrier Ridge is quiet for three or four days. And by the end of September, the Australians realise that Eero Barrier Ridge has been deserted, and now it's the pushback by the Australians. Seventh day, thought this would be the break of it, I reckon. We got to camp about, I think, two o'clock yesterday. So we had the afternoon off, and I reckon, just a, a few hours rest, it's just amazing, you know, your legs feel better. This is the same sort of hill as we finished with yesterday and <coughs> it doesn't seem anywhere near as tough, I don't reckon. Maybe it's the start of the day, so it's all good, it's beautiful. I'm going to go into uh, silent running now if you wouldn't mind. I'm going to pretend I'm a, a coney tree. I'm going to try and snare a bird of paradise. So if you just keep quiet now, they like movement and colour. I think I can snare one down here. No, I thought it was. That is, is that is that humorous? You find that humorous? <laughs> you don't find it humorous. That's I feel embarrassed. It's so, so stupid. the toughest. I don't care what else. That is the toughest. Oh, yes, man. That's the leader. That's the toughest. I don't care what happens after that. I don't care what we do after that. All right, so this is Eora Bay Ridge and this is as far as the Japanese got. Um, the Australians dug in and they were pushed back to Imiter Ridge and Imiter Ridge was going to be the last stand. They had to defend there or die there. So they came back and uh, they didn't retreat, they advanced to the rear because retreats are not in their vocabulary. That's right. Hmm. So I remember that. So after the Japanese retreated, the Australians didn't know this, they waited and then as they came back through here they found that everything deserted by them.
so I awoke reasonably refreshed and um, started what was probably the most horrendous climb I've ever, in fact my nose started to bleed at one stage. We, uh, it was frightening, it was on the way up to Urabaya, a ridge it was, Urabaya Ridge. And, um, but look, as I sit here, I feel fulfilled. I've, I know I've said this, while you're doing it, you whinge and you think, why would I be doing this? But I feel really uh, serene and calm now. Every part of me is aching. But I feel fulfilled, and that, of course, is uh, what we've done this for. Uh, well, we haven't done it to feel fulfilled. We've done it to understand in the... Um, extravagant circumstances we're doing it, just how tough it was all those years ago. And I know that is a recurring theme that we keep saying, but when you look at some of the territory we covered today, it's frightening. And today was tough. Um, the uphill was the toughest of the whole week. And my mind turned to him because I, you get into a rhythm and before I knew it, he was, you know, he must've been a hundred metres behind me. and. Uh, so I got there a fair few minutes before him and I just slumped to the ground and I thought whether or not he'd get up there and it would have been no disgrace had he not because it was that sort of a day. Um, but five minutes later there he appeared over the ridge and he was wrecked and he slumped and I did say to him, I said I'm really proud of you and we're not, we're not touchy-feely blokes, that's just not who we are but I was very proud of what he did today. I've been very, <coughs> really proud of what he's been able to do over the seven days because um, it's a hell of a lot more demanding and taxing than, than I thought it would be. And, and he's 67 and he's soldiered on and he's got here and he's going to make it. <laughs>